What's up everybody, Chris with South Carolina Gun School and today we're going to be talking about the SIG 1911 Max. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please Lord give me a sign, a sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? I wanna be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and you'll be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. Welcome back everybody. Like I said, we're going to be talking about the SIG 1911 Max. Um, first thing is let's go ahead and show that we are clear. Uh, we'll go ahead and drop out the mag. It does come with a 8 round mag, so 8 plus 1 meaning 1 in the chamber, 8 in the mag. This is a gun that was designed in conjunction with Max Michelle and SIG Sauer. Uh, for ones that don't know, Max Michelle is a very big competition shooter. Uh, very, very good competition shooter. Probably one of the best in the world, but that's where it got its name from, 1911 Max. Uh, because a lot of what he shoots are 1911s and he is sponsored by SIG. So it would only make sense that why not they would work together to make a gun. Uh, so he worked with their engineers to design this gun. and. That being said, it's pretty much ready to go for a competition right out of the box. I really can't think of anything else that you could do to it. I'm sure some of y'all probably can, um, but everything that's been done to it, to me, is everything that you would do to a 1911 if you wanted to use it in a competition. It is an all steel frame. Okay, it weighs in at 41.6 ounces, which comes out to, I think, roughly like two and a half pounds, something like that. Somebody will check my math, I'm sure, um, and let me know in the comments. But it, it, it doesn't feel two and a half pounds. Now, that's two and a half pounds with the mag. I'm sure it's a little less without the mag. But what they're talking about is with the magazine in with the gun so you're looking at about two and a half pounds you got a five inch barrel on your grips here you have ho custom g10 chain link grips so this thing isn't going to move around in your hands it's not overly aggressive to where it will hurt your hands but this thing will not move around in your hands all right you've got stippling on the front part of the grip and the rear of the grip as well too so this thing ain't going nowhere, I promise you. It's got some, these G10 grips are great. Um, G10 is actually something they use on knife handles. So that just kind of gives you an idea of the durability that you have here with these grips. All right, you have a nitron finished stainless steel slide. On the front, you do have forward cocking serrations and always your rear cocking serrations. Then with your trigger, you have a SIG flat trigger and it comes in at five pounds. I'll be honest, doesn't feel five pounds to me. Um, Y'all can ding me on this if you want to and beat me up about it, but I didn't put test the trigger with my pressure uh, to see what that came out to, but they're saying five pounds. All right, you've got an external extractor. You have Dawson ice magwell. So you've already got a flared magwell on here. So you can't beat that already having a flared magwell on here. A lot of people are going to put this on there, especially running competition. And then you have a Coing speed hammer. Along with that, you have an EGW sear and firing pin. Then you've got fiber optic front sight. You've got adjustable rear sight, and that's windage and elevation. So like I said, this thing out of the box to me is, is ready to go depending on what type of competition and what class you're competing in. 
it's the first time I put my hand on this gun, I was just like, oh my God. Then I shot it. And let me tell you, this thing is a shooter. Oh, it feels so good in the hands. It's so smooth. Yes, it is chambered in 45, so there's a little bit more recoil to it, but with the right grip, that shouldn't be an issue, especially with these handles, all right, and the way the grip is set up, it's not moving around. Um, I do believe that you can get it in nine millimeter, and I believe also 40. Uh, there might be a few other calibers. Um, I just noticed that there was nine and 40, uh, so please forgive me if there are other calibers. I'll have a link down in the description to the website so you can go in and read more about it but i just wanted to give a little overview of this of course it's got your normal 1911 grip safety and then your thumb safety over here on the side as well too um, breaking down is not hard but a little bit of a pain because of course you've got to hold the slide in the right spot and then you got to push uh, right here you push the pin through and everything comes off so uh, overly complicated just can be a little bit of a pain depending on your hand strength and things like that uh, I did pick up a few extra mags these mags fit in here just fine with this mag well uh, the way it's grooved I don't know if you can see it right up here if I can hold see it's already got the little groove right there so the magazines fit in there. you don't have to put a magazine extension on here if you don't want to especially if you're competing in like a uh, stock class or something like that where the gun is pretty much bone stock you just got pretty much what that means is you buy it open up the box and that's how you have to compete with it so it's really set up really nicely already out of the box um, you maybe can add mag extensions I've got to read more into the, some of the competition stuff I'm not a competition shooter there's all kind of different rules regulations classes involved in that but if you're looking for a good 1911, um, this is it. At the, the price point retail, I want to say it's $1,400, $1,500. Some of y'all are probably like, oh my God, that's not a bad price for what you're getting in this gun. All right. Don't sit here and call SIG overpriced if you're going out and buying a four or $5,000 Staccato. Now, I'm not saying they're overpriced. I'm not saying that all before any of y'all start going in on me on that. I'm just saying... Don't drop that kind of money and say this is overpriced. I'm sorry, for what you're getting with this gun, it's not overpriced. I have seen them on sale for $1,100 to $1,200. Uh, if anybody's seen them any cheaper anywhere else, please feel free to put that down in the comments. But that's about the cheapest that I've seen them on sale. But like I said, you're getting a really good gun for the money. And to me, if you're a gun enthusiast, a 1911 should be something that you want in the collection. Now don't go and cheap your way into a 1911 and end up with one that's not that great. Can you find some that are really good under $1,000? Yes. Um, can you find some less cheaper than that, say in the four or $500 range? Yes, but you gotta look at what you're getting, all right? The quality that you're getting. You're getting a very good quality gun with a lot of stuff that's done to it. Please, if you get a chance to know somebody that has this, go out and shoot it and you'll see what I'm talking about. This just this gun just runs so smoothly. I've thoroughly enjoyed shooting this thing. And after I shot it, I was like, because I was looking for a 1911 at the time, and after I shot it, I was like, oh my God, this is the 1911 that I want. But you get whatever you like. You know, if you're not a SIG fan, then don't get it. But if you're a SIG fan or if you're a 1911 fan and you're maybe thinking about possibly wanting to compete one day, here you go, right here, ready to go. Like I said, adjustable rear sight, so that's windage elevation. So you're able to adjust that to where you need it depending on what you're doing. This fiber optic sight, man, does this thing pop, especially in the sunlight or if you're in a heavily lit uh, indoor area this thing really pops. I mean, it's about like a red dot. I mean, I can grab this thing right away. So what you're getting for the money is absolutely phenomenal. Please go take a look at this thing, shoot it, see what you think. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. You're not gonna be disappointed with it. 
All right, I hope y'all enjoyed the video and learning a little bit about the SIG 1911 MAX. Please continue to subscribe, comment, like, share, do all you can to help support. I can't thank you all enough for all the support, all of the sharing, all the commenting. And if there's other things that y'all want me to do reviews on, throw it down in the comments, send me an email, text, whatever. My information's on the website, and I'll do my best to try to get a review video on it. But thank you, thank you, thank you again. I can't say that enough for everybody out there that's been supporting, helping, friends, sponsors, affiliates, all that stuff. I, it is greatly, greatly appreciated. So please continue to come back for more great videos. And always remember, if you're not shooting, you're reloading. If you're not reloading, you're fighting. If you're not fighting, you're dead. Train to live. See you on the range. Society's a myth. Put there to make you sit. Listen to what they give. Don't ask questions. Shut your lid. Yeah, don't ask questions. Shut your lid. I need to run away from this and go get off the grid. Feel like my